So let's take a look today at the square and the different properties that a square has. Let's first begin with the definition of a square. So a square is a quadrilateral, four sides, easy peasy. So a square is a quadrilateral and also all of the angles are congruent and all of the sides are congruent. So these angles at A, B, C, and D all congruent and all of the sides, top and bottom, left and right, all four sides are congruent. Well, let's remember, if we're saying that all four sides are congruent, then that means the top and bottom guys are congruent, the left and right guys are congruent, and if we have two pairs of opposite sides that are congruent, then we have a parallelogram. So yes, a square is a parallelogram contains all the properties of a parallelogram, so we can include those as properties of a square. Other things that we want to highlight here are the fact that, well, they told us by definition that a square has all angles congruent. If all of the angles are congruent, they're all 90 degrees. These two are congruent in 90, these two are congruent in 90, all of that. And we also said that when we had a quadrilateral, and all the angles were congruent, that that was a rectangle. So we also are going to include all the properties of a rectangle because a square is a rectangle. What's more, oh, and that's right angles and diagonals are congruent. What's more is that we said that all the sides are congruent. And if you have a quadrilateral and all the sides are congruent, well, then it must be a rhombus also. And so we can talk about the properties of a rhombus. There were three. And one of them was that all of the sides are congruent. Check. Then we started talking about the diagonals. We said the diagonals are perpendicular and that these angles here are cut in half. Diagonals are perpendicular and the diagonals bisect opposite angles. So please pause, take a moment, and write down all those properties. Let's take a look at these guys down here at the bottom also. A couple questions. Okay, so we have a square soon as we have a square, so let's kind of, I'm going to dissect this square up here actually before I look at those. The square told me all the sides are congruent and it told me that all of these angles here are congruent to each other. So they're all right angles. So that's something I knew. Because I have a rectangle, one of the things I remember about a rectangle is that these four little pieces here of the diagonal, they're all congruent to each other. So I'm going to mark this guy and all four of these exactly the same. So I know in a square, all of these pieces are congruent to each other. So now, not only is this a rectangle, but it's also a parallelogram, uh, a um, a rhombus and one of the major rhombus properties is that we have right angles right here in the middle. So I want to remember that I have four right triangles. I have four right triangles and they are all exactly the same. And another property that I remember from the rhombus is that each diagonal bisects these opposite angles. And if this angle here was 90 degrees, when it's bisected, it's 45 and 45. Same over here. This is 45 and 45. All the way around, all of those little acute angles are 45 degrees. So these are perfect little 45, 45, 90 right triangles, and all of them are exactly the same. So that may help us as we move on. Here's number one. Okay. AE. Okay, well, I know it's a square, and they're already talking about a piece of the diagonal. So you know what? I'm going to mark all of my diagonals the same, and I'm going to remind myself that they are perpendicular to each other. A couple properties. Maybe they'll come in handy. Okay. AE is 4. I'm going to write it in. But not only am I going to write it there, because I don't know where else I'm going to need it, I'm going to write it everywhere that I marked with that one little tick mark. So all of these little pieces are four. I want to find EC. EC, oh look, there it is. 
Well, that guy, 4, done. I already wrote it in. And I want to find AC. Okay, that's going to be a little bit of work. That's this side over here. But remember, we just said that each of these little triangles here is a 45, 45, 90. And this is why we did all that studying on right triangles. There are lots of different ways we could solve right triangles. Pythagorean theorem, hey, you have two sides. You can find the third side if you want to. Here's your right angle. So 4 squared plus 4 squared is equal to x squared. And you can go for it. Pythagorean theorem, done. You could even use trig on that if you want to. Okay, if there's a radical answer, you're going to get some sort of a decimal, and you'll have to round. But trig works too. Third thing that I'm going to do is I remember this is one of those specials and I memorized some rules. And I'm going to go from a smaller side to a larger side. And whenever I go bigger, I multiply and I remember the relationship between a leg and the hypotenuse in the 45, 45, 90 is radical 2. So I'm going to multiply times radical 2 and this is simply 4 radical 2. That's what AC is equal to. Last one over here. Oops. You get it all in the picture? Okay. So now for this one right here, I have a square. Um, so let's see what the question is before I start marking it, because I don't know exactly what I need. CAD angle. C to A to D. That's this guy here. And this is what it is equal to. But I kind of remember what I said about each of these little angles in the square. Let's slide up to these notes. We said each of these acute angles in these bitty triangles is 45 degrees. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to remember that this angle is 45 degrees. So 4x plus 13 equals 45. 45 minus 13, 32, divide by 4, and x is equal to Eight. Ooh, now they started to ask me about the perimeter. Look at the order of these letters. A, B, D, C. Not alphabetical, so let's look at our picture. A, B, D, C. When we name any kind of a polygon, we have to go around the picture. You have to go around it in order. We never would want to call this A, B, C, D. That's kind of a, a Z shape, and that would not close up. A, B, D, C. So that's something to kind of point out. But here we want the perimeter of it. We didn't talk about the sides at all, except for this. But here's the thing. Within the same problem, they already told us what X was. X is 8. So each side, which is A, B. A, B is a side. That's 3 times 8. That's 24. That's one side. So I'm going to do 24, oops, turn it on, here, 24 times 4, 96. My perimeter is 96.